Hey everyone, Michael here. In the previous video of this series, I talked about back testing on the replay um, for uh, the, the replay function for TradingView, and uh, attaches is a chart that uh, that I put up on Apple on the daily that goes back to let's see, it goes back to the fifth of January of 2022. So it's in replay mode on the daily. And when I'm dealing with equities and options on those equities, I like to understand how the options um, or an option strategy actually performed uh, so that I can actually record it. Um, so what I really need to have the real numbers or what the, uh, what the, the numbers were at the end of the day, because it, in this particular case, it, be trading the daily on this particular strategy. And I need to understand what actually happened. Now, Obviously, I do need to put in a entry long or short in this particular one, this particular signal. This is, by the way, this is the SSL. Um, it's uh, one indicator I like to use occasionally. And the below here is the tricks, and then I have the ADX DMI. Um, so this particular system, let's just assume that it says we, we take a short. And I like to define where I'm wrong when I take a take a position. So where I'm wrong is if we ever got up to this area or we got a close above that area. So that would kind of like be a, a stop, um, at least a technical stop from an option perspective. Then I like to have a target. Now, normally in options, my, my first target is either gonna be a pivot low or certainly trying to get an option to double. Um, I really like to, uh, to exit uh, my options plays at a double, um, either the full position or or half a position if um, if I think it's going to run for a while. Uh, Apple, I don't, don't, generally don't like to go short, or at least over the last couple of years. But, uh, but in this particular case, let's just say I took a short. Uh, so once I say, yeah, I'm going to take a short, I need to actually determine the option strategy. So I'm just going to use a straight call, I'm sorry, a straight put uh, strategy. And I want to know what happened. So the tool that I use to do this is Tom's option tools. Okay, so I recommend things only only things that I personally use. Um, so I'm, um, truth be told, I'm, a, I'm an affiliate Tom's, but I am only an affiliate because this is what I use. This is a, this is a core tool that I use in my back testing and also doing forward trading as well. So in back testing, so so, so I'll give you an affiliate link if you want. But uh, in back testing, I'm able to actually set the date. Okay, so that was actually. January 6th, right there. Okay, so I can go back and then I can take a look at what the options were on Apple at the end of the day on the 6th. Okay, so what I do then is I go and say, okay, well, if I'm in trading the daily options, normally I like to go, me personally, I like to go at least 30 days, actually more towards 45 days. So let's just say on this case, I would take an expiry that is 42 days from, uh, sorry, 43 days from expiry. Um, now, I I like to take, let's just say, I, I like to take moves over the, you know, maybe it's going to take five days or 10 days to do what I do. I, I really want to make sure that I don't get too much theta burn on an option. So my preference is for a swing type of trade is to go out that long, okay, to, to 40, 45 days. So I click update. And it's going to give me the options chain on that particular day. Oops, I'm sorry. I got to actually get on the right stock, which is Apple. It's still going to be the 43 days. So I can do any stock I want. So now I've got the options chain of Apple with the expiry of February 18th, which is 43 days out from the 6th of January earlier this year. So this is the chain and my personal preference, what I like to do is I like to take options with a delta of roughly 30, 35. Okay, so I've got the delta right here. It's got the bid mid ask. So the mid delta is 32. Okay, so what that means is that for every $1 decrease of stock price, the options um, are going to increase in value by 32 cents. Okay. Um, so I would pick that, okay? And I'll just say, I'm doing, I'm gonna do one. I like to position my size, position size myself to $500 or less in a, a $10,000 account, and I hit risk graph. 
Okay, so this is going to give me a risk graph of that particular options play. And it shows me what my risk is based on the time to expire. The red is, is uh, 43 days and then at 29 days to expire. Really, that's kind of the latest day I want to be out of this particular one. 29 days is going to get me, um, you know, it's going to be this blue line. So the stock still needs to come down for me to be in a break even mode. Um, and what I'm normally going to do if I'm just in one contract is if I get a double, I'm just going to sell it or I might do some adjustment techniques. OK, so this gets me into an option. It would have cost me four hundred and thirty three dollars for one single put. OK, so then I go back to the chart and I say, what happened? Did it actually go down? Did it did it violate or did it did it do what I was hoping it would do? And yes, it definitely goes down over some period of time. Okay, so, um, and I need to look at the actual option to see what happened. Okay, so what actually happens over that time? I can put that forward here to understand whether over that particular period of time, just advance it one day at a time, if I had a significant loss, significant enough based on a trade plan, when I'm going in for $433, I don't want to lose more than, let's say, $250, but I'm hoping to get a double. Okay, so, you know, it's getting kind of limit here, but am I still according to trade plan? Yeah, sort of. It's And, and technically the chart, as we can see, it was doing okay. Um, and then it starts moving down, and this particular option goes into... Um, a profit level, which gets pretty decent, 52% um, on this particular day, which is the 20th, and we are now 20 day, 29 days to expiry. I normally don't like to hold options longer than 30 days to expiry when I'm going in a particular position like this. So at this point, um, on the chart as well, On this day right here, so I can actually go back and I can say, oops, no, I need to be on that day. On this day, um, my particular option was worth 50% ROI, or was it the, the previous day? I think it was this day, the 21st of January. Let's see. Make sure. Oops. No, oh, no, I got one more day to go. One more day to go. So... You know, 29 days, 28 days, that's getting really kind of limit. But, uh, you know, I, I probably would have been out of this thing at 29 days. Um, and then I can go and I can off, go and off and record that. OK, and, and there's a certain setup that I saw here and it's based on a system. It's uh, my SSL system. Um, and I would record that and and uh, start developing stats on this particular system based on the actual uh, option itself. Um, that's going to be for another video but uh, and how I developed the stats. But this is how I use TOMS, OK? The other way I use TOMS is I use it to generate ideas for earnings, OK? And a very big part of the Green Goose Trader blog, both here at the blog itself and also at optionsplayers.com, is that we do earnings plays and I'm able to actually go off and I can test, for example, uh, the, let's see, um, one of the, one of the plays I like to do is uh, JPM during earnings. Okay. And what I can do is I love to do iron condors on JPM. Uh, so I can go back, let's just say go back a year go back to the 1st of January, 2021 on JPM. And what I like to do is I like to go in and do it just before earnings. JPM always reports uh, before market opens. So I'd go back to uh, the 14th. You can see that the earnings date is the 15th before market open. So I go to the 14th. And I'm able to actually start developing stats on JPM itself for the type of strategy that I love to do on, um, on earnings for, for banks and some other stocks that actually don't move. Okay, so uh, one strategy that I love to do is 
a iron butterfly. So I just go off and sin. I'm sorry, I've got uh, lots of things. So I, I go off and I do. I look at doing an iron butterfly for every earnings for the past year to see how it works and develop stats. So an iron butterfly in this particular case uh, would be a well, let's see, $4. So 141 minus four is 136. And then, uh, let's see, is that right? One four, no, it's not. I wanna go to 138. And then I'm gonna add four on this one. So that would be 145. So I would set up like that to look at what my risk is to develop stats to with in a in a real back test world of what actually happened um, with this particular strategy if i had gotten this type of iron butterfly or the, you know this is this is actually a, a broken wing iron butterfly and how did it actually work okay and then i just advance it by one day and it gives me the stat for that particular play. For, so if I happen to use this as a strategy and I wanted to use this as a strategy, it gives me the stats for that particular play, which is a 15.7% rate of return. And it's not that great. Um, you know, but it allows me to develop the stats. And then what I'll do is I'll record the stats in another piece of software to understand what my win-loss ratio is, as well as my profit factor. And that will be the subject of the next video. So Tom's is a really powerful tool for back testing, but also it's a tool that allows me to uh, really get a fantastic confidence level on real plays and get an understanding of what my risk level is um, for anything that I might be able to do so that I can properly position size. And so I'll, I'll bring this thing up at the end of the, end of the trading day on equities and I'll use it to uh, help develop strategies um, that are very much based on what I have back tested in the, in the past. Okay. So um, in a lot of the earnings, well, actually all of the earnings plays that, that we do, the source of the back test, the source of all the research is based on using this particular tool. So uh, very, very powerful, highly recommended. Um, I, I, again, I only recommend things that, uh, that I use personally use, um, it costs money, but you know, most tools, uh, they definitely, uh, do cost money. Um, and it's just the way it is. Okay. And that's why businesses hire accountants and marketing professionals. Are. So this is, this is my, uh, this is my financial analyst. Let's just call it my financial analyst for my options trading, um, uh, business. Thanks much everyone. And, uh, Hopefully you enjoyed this video.